asking until God lets you realize. God knocks on your whole, uh, your heart. Uh, John six forty four takes a uh, uh, place, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's knocking on your heart's door, letting you know that you're lost. Then you start what? You start listening. You start looking. You start seeking, and that's when you find. He said, bring all of Israel up here because we're going to find out who's God. He said, you tell Jezebel to bring all of her 450 prophets that sit at her table and the 400 prophets from the grove. Bring them all up here. He said, I want you to pick out two bullocks. You know the story. Pick out two bullocks. He said, let them take their choice. The 450 prophets, you take the choice of one of the two. Leave the other one for me. I'm by myself. You got 450. Y'all dress that bullet. Build you an altar. Dress the bullet and put it on there. You know the story. Put your wood on there. Put your oxen on there. And then you pray to Baal. And I'm going to tell you, the, he said, after you have your chance, I'll do mine. He said, now the first God that sends fire down from heaven to consume the offering, that's the God that's real. You see, God was listening to his prophet. He was listening to the man of God. And the man of God was speaking with boldness because he knew what he had inside of him. Everybody agreed. So you know the story. 450 prophets of Baal put their, built their altar, put the bullock on there, dressed and put it on there. And they prayed and they called out to Baal. They prayed and they prayed. I, Elijah said, well, maybe he's out visiting somebody. Shout a little louder. Uh, maybe he's gone to, uh, he's talking to a neighbor. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's sick. You know, they kept, he kept making all these excuses. He said, y'all cry louder. And they cried out louder, but nothing happened. And that evening, around 3 o'clock or so, Elijah went out there and he got him some wood and he built it up and laid his wood down in fashion and cut up the, his, uh, his bullock and laid it on there. And he said, now, they built the altar out of stone and laid the wood on the stone and he dug a trench around it. And he told me, he said, bring me 12 barrels of water. He said, go get four barrels and fill it up and pour it over the wood and the, the, the oxen and everything. They poured four barrels on, and he said, go get me four more. And they poured four more on, and he said, go get me four more, 12 barrels of water. Now, we're in the middle of a drought, middle of a drought. Hadn't rained in three years. They've been out looking for water just to feed the animals. He said, you go find me 12 barrels of water. Why? Because when he sent them, he knew that God was going to lead them in the right direction to find what they needed. You see, when you listen to the man of God, the man of God, if he's truly called of God, will lead you in the right direction. He will tell you what he needs. He tells you what you need. And then you have to be obedient, and then God takes over. You see, God sent his men down here to instruct the children of God. He sent the men down here to give you directions from the Holy Word and through the anointing of God. And when you hear the Word, then you're supposed to act upon that Word through obedience, and then God takes over. You see, Elijah didn't go with the man. He didn't go with the man. He said, go get me four barrels of water. He didn't go with the men. He didn't go with the women. He told them what he was hearing from God. Go get four barrels of water. He didn't go show them where the water was, but the Holy Spirit stepped in because Elijah had done what God told him to do. And the Holy Spirit stepped in and took them to the water. They brought that four barrels back. He said, now go get me four more. Go get me four more. I don't know if they went to the same place. It doesn't make any difference. God sent them to the place he wanted them to go. They brought the water in there and poured it over. And then Elijah looked up to heaven and said, God, show them that you're God. Just show yourself. Prove yourself that you're God. Here come the fire. The fire came down, lapped up the meat, took up all the meat, burned it up, took it up. Burnt the stones, burnt the wood, took it up, burnt the stones and took them up, and then drained all the water out of the ditch, took all the water out of the ditch up to heaven. Took it all. The water was to wash down the meat that God had just had. I, James, I don't know about the salt. We know that God won't eat meat without salt. And uh, it's in the Bible. For those of you that don't know it, it's in the Bible. God said, don't offer me any meat without salt. He said, anytime you give me a meat offering, you make sure you put plenty of salt on it. And so he wants salt on his meat. It's in the Bible. It's there. But church, I'm telling you today that you have to be obedient to what God says. Now, it lapped it all up. Now, I want to show you how quickly things can turn around. 
Elijah said, I want Israel, men of Israel, gather up all of these false prophets. Bring them down to the river, Brook Kishon. He said, bring them all down here. And we know he took the 450 down there, and I'm thinking I'll, I have no reason not to believe he took the other 400. He said, bring the false prophets down here. The, uh, these, uh, I call them false prophets, but uh, the prophets of Baal. Took them down by the creek, the river. And Abraham, I mean Abraham, but the children of Israel took them down there. But Elijah slew them. He killed all of them. And let's just say he only killed 450. That's a lot of men for one man to kill. And, you know, think about the other uh, 349 standing there. They see Elijah walk up to one, cut him all to pieces with the sword, kill him. Then think about the 348 that's left when they take the, it takes the next one down there and kills him. Think about the 300 after he just killed 50. And they see him laying all over the ground, blood everywhere. Think about what they're thinking about what they would be doing. They couldn't do anything, Brother James. They couldn't do a thing. Why? Because God had them bound. God said, you ain't touching my servant. Why? Because he's doing exactly what I told him to do. And I'm telling you today that God will go with you. He'll see you uh, through every situation you get yourself into. He'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. And he'll protect you through all things. He killed all the prophets. Abraham, not Abraham, Ahab. I don't know why I keep saying Abraham. Maybe we'll get into that in a minute. But Ahab went home. With that spirit on him. Honey, the man of God just killed all your prophets. Do what? Elijah, the man of God, just slew all of your prophets. Not only your prophets that sit here at the table, but he slew the 400 of the groves. We have no men out there preaching evil. We have no men out there deceiving people. He killed them all. She called the servant and said, you go find Elijah and you tell him. That by this time tomorrow, I'm gonna, if I hadn't done the same thing to him, let it be done to me. But I'm going to kill him the same way he killed all my prophets. Well, the word got back to Elijah that Jezebel was mad. Now, church, this is the whole point of the message today is the fact that you can have the Spirit of God on you so strong. God said, I give you power over everything. I give you power over all things. You've got it. Matthew 28, 18, he said, all, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. And Luke 10, 19, he says, I give it to you, David. I give you the power. You speak it, and it shall be done. You believe it, and you can have what you believe. You can speak to the mountain, and the mountain's got to go. You can speak to the problem, the problem's got to go. He said, you speak your healing, you speak your blessings, you speak everything you want. If you believe I'll do it, I'll do it, is what he says in the Word. No matter what kind of problems you're facing, God says, I'll take care of it. You can have that boldness. Right now in this church, if the enemy tried to come against you, you've got enough power around you in here. Oh, you ain't messing with me. <laughs> but when you get outside, Elijah had got off by himself. He just killed 450 servants of the devil. Maybe 850 servants of the devil. He done made the devil mad. The devil using Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you, Elijah. Because he had gotten off by himself when the message come to him. So he took off. Fleeing Jezebel. Got out there under a juniper tree. And said, God, take my life. Take my life. I'm not worthy. I'm no better than anybody else. Go ahead and take my life. Kill me. I'm, you know, I don't, you know, just take me on out of here. Got the feeling sorry for himself. Finally, he cried and moped and wept so much he went to sleep. An angel came. Smote him on the side and said, wake up, Elijah. Eat and drink. There was bread right there, a cake of bread. Cooking right there on the coals. And he got up and ate and drank. And he fell back off asleep. You know how it is when your stomach gets full. <laughs> he laid back down on the juniper tree and went back to sleep. The angel came back later and said, Elijah, wake up, eat, eat, and drink because you've got a long journey to go 